hello there everybody, it's Sally Cathcart here. I'm back today, really excitingly actually, to talk about the 7 out of 10 test. That's what I can call it. It's a bit like over here in the UK we have a programme called 7 out of 10 cats. But um, the 7 out of 10 test is something that I use with all my students. They're very used to doing it on a, because I use it on such a regular basis. And it's a way, a tool... Um, where they begin to self-assess their playing, yeah? They're able to play a piece and then we go through the 7 out of 10 test and they can say whether it's good or not, good enough, good enough or not. Um, and I use this as part of the studio re repertoire rich, you know, a studio challenge to learn, let's say for me it's 20 pieces um, in the next six months. Um, but I also use this in, on other occasions as well and it really does help them to understand what is okay and what they still need to work on, if anything. So the way that this works is it is a tool and like all tools it is, uh, it is suitable for the task but it's not suitable for other tasks. So the 7 out of 10 test, um, I ask them they play through a piece and then they have to give themselves seven out of ten and I might say to them did it have most of the correct rhythms yes okay so what do you give that and they might give themselves seven out of ten were the notes correct yeah there were one or two little spots here they might say but otherwise it was correct so what would you give that oh I might give that eight out of ten and was it played at a suitable tempo now this is always an interesting one because um I had this with a, with a student the other day and he played through a piece, you know, notes, rhythm, um, dynamics are all there, but actually it was about half speed. So he then had to do it again and it, it helps him to realise, helps them to realise that if they don't play at the correct tempo, they don't get the right character for a piece of music. Because that's another one that they've got to think about as well, is does it have character? Does the piece tell a story? And to get the character in the story, they need to have thought about the dynamics and they need to have the articulation as well. So character story encompasses dynamics and articulation. And also the, the final one I might ask them is, does it have fluency? Did you keep going without stopping? So let's just check those again. Rhythm, you know, were all the rhythms correct? Notes, were the notes correct? Was it played at a suitable tempo? Did it have fluency? Did you keep going without stopping? And the final one, did, you, did it have some character um, in terms of the staccato, uh, the articulation and the dynamics? Now, if they can answer seven out of 10, eight out of 10 to all of them, then that's a signal, isn't it? That, yeah, that's okay. If they want to move on at that point and not refine the things, you know, you can then say, well, why is it only seven out of 10? What would you work on? to actually take it up to an 8 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10. And I will always do that before we then move on. So 7 out of 10 is fine. The music has integrity. It is pretty much as the composer wants it, but it's got areas that could still be improved. But maybe not every piece needs to get to that 10 out of 10. You know, to be honest, I don't think there's such a thing as perfect. So I'm a big fan of it's good enough. So 7 out of 10 is it's good enough. You have all these things in place, it's good enough. But if you did want to work on it for another week, and of course sometimes they do, what would you improve? And they are then able to think, okay, well I had that big stutter, didn't I? I lost fluency, I had a big pause at this point. Or they might say, well, I got the rhythm wrong at the beginning, so I need to go back and fix that. Or they might say, I didn't have enough character, I didn't have the dynamics. It really helps the student to focus on what needs to be improved. And, and you know, I don't know about you, but I've always found that's an area students will struggle with. Actually, to be honest, it's an area I think teachers sometimes struggle with. To know how to get the student to move the piece to the next level, yeah? So this could be a tool for you to use in your teaching and you'll find, hand over the responsibility to your students. Do it with them. Don't just say, what was it? You know, that, that what needs to be improved? That's not very helpful. But how was the rhythm? How were, you know, how often, I'm muttering a little bit, I know today, going randomly, but you know how you often say to a student, so, you know, what, what could you improve? They play it through. And you say, 
all right, so what needs to improve? And they go, and they point out something that you hadn't thought at all. This is much more focused. Rhythm, notes, tempo, fluency, character. Five things that will really help them to know whether a piece is ready to either improve further, to move on from, or actually not quite reaching the standard. And furthermore, it will really help them to know how to move it on. I find it tremendously useful. I use it all the time in my teaching. I have no resources from it. I, I, you know, I just, we just use it. So you, you don't have to uh, create something to do this. It, you just do it in the moment. And I will be doing it with my next pupil, who's um, uh, has just reminded me on my calendar, they're gonna be at three o'clock. He's doing the 20 piece challenge. I shall be doing the uh, seven out of 10 test with him for him to decide. Anyhow, I hope you've made something of all my ramblings today. I get very, very excited about the seven out of 10 test, I have to say, because it works and it's so easy. I hope you find that useful. See you next week. Bye-bye.